Good afternoon to you. Report your altitude. Uh, 2,000 feet on 1014. Bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravo. Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here, X-Plane Dedicated. Today we're looking at the SSG-747-8I, I for Intercontinental. That means that this aircraft is big. It has been extended by, I think, something like 16 feet. And, uh, of course, with that comes extra power, etc. What Boeing have done with this aircraft is they've given it some new engines, the General Electric engines, absolutely huge, producing a massive amount of thrust. In fact, the Boeing 747, Seven has always been one of the most overpowered aircraft there is. Uh, I think, if I'm correct, that this aircraft can fly on just one engine, believe it or not, although you know, it's not expected for that to ever happen. As you can see here as we do our walk around, the modeling, the exterior modeling on the SSG is very, very good indeed. And uh, it's had an update, so we're now, it's not version 2, it's version 1.2. 9.1 or something or 1.51 I can't remember exactly I'll put it up here uh, the exact model number but as you can see as we do the walk around the modeling is superb the uh, engine carolings there with those kind of fluted ends which uh, improve efficiency of the engine really showing up uh, in high detail the exterior modeling is very good. There is one artifact on the exterior model that uh, they can't seem to get rid of. And uh, for those of you who remember, it looks like the marching ants on one of the engine uh, nacelles. But other than that, the exterior modeling is superb. Interior modeling, equally as good, maybe could be doing with refreshing and upgrading a little bit. But there have been a number of updates and enhancements to this aircraft uh, model as you can see as we look through the cockpit and having been in a 747 level d simulator at cardiff aviation it's very good i mean it it does look the business um i think it would look an awful lot better on a larger monitor i've got a 29 inch monitor i think on a larger monitor again it would look even better now on first appearance when one first looks at this aircraft you might think that it's rather simplistic but it comes with a massive 225 page manual it has been licensed by boeing so boeing have given this aircraft its seal of approval not only that boeing actually used this model in one of those simulators here we are with the overhead and um, unlike uh, say the 757 and the 767 where you go up and down to do your flow with this you go from left to right and you go from top to bottom so rather than kind of going in a squiggly light squiggly line up and down the overhead you just go from top to bottom and uh, as i say in the previous incarnations of this um, the startup routine was a, maybe a little bit simplistic but now it's been changed and so you've got to, once you get power on the aircraft you can then go to the electronic flight bag, flight bag and turn on the uh, external power, the ground power. I will say that some of the click spots are not they're not as good as they should be um, and that's my one gripe at the moment that's the one thing that I think really needs improving is that the click spots uh, on many of the buttons uh, on on this aircraft, including the EFB, they need to be they need to be uh, enlarged. Maybe I think that's the word I'm looking for. They need to be made bigger, and so that you can find the click spots easily enough. Anyway, you've got the electronic flight bag here, whereby you can uh, calculate your fuel, load your fuel, uh, load your payload of the aircraft as well. How many passengers you're going to have, cargo, etc., which all have an effect on the dynamics of the aircraft. Okay. Once again, uh, as I say, huge manual. I was looking through the manual earlier on, and it, it is really well produced. Uh, it's written in extremely good uh, English, uh, considering that Ricardo comes from uh, South America and his first language, I believe, is uh, Spanish. It may be Portuguese, I'm not quite sure, but the manual is very, very well written. It's very clearly laid out, and the number of people involved in this, uh, in this creation of this uh, 7478i is... Uh, far more than I expected. So the uh, lead developer, 3D modeling and lead developer is Ricardo Bologini, uh, but there's additional 3D modeling by Jordan Palmer, Andres, uh, Andre Bozovic, and George Garrido. Systems and flight dynamics, and this is something that people always ask about with these uh, study level aircraft. 
systems and flight dynamics and there have been uh, five or six people involved in that Ricardo, Javier Cortez, Carlos Garcia, Stefan Keller and Bill Grabowski so you know a really dedica dedicated team there uh, textures and repaints have been done by another uh, number of people and somebody new to that team was Costantinos Koronakis um, so uh, an international team as well uh, I would say uh, moving down the list you've t got technical advisors uh, Tim Gleason, Sean Kelly, Stephen Takasu, Sam Akano, Andrew Mitzi, Emma Aslam, Ian Domis. So, you know, quite a number of people have been offering technical assistance and, and acting as technical advisors. And I wonder if any of those are actual Boeing pilots. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, tut there are a number of tutorial videos. They've been done by Andre Boriswich. Boriswich, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, I said Stu would like to thank the entire beta team for all their input and hard work and the development team could not have completed its work without the beta team's kind assistance uh, which is always essential. This uh, product has been in development for quite some time and has been out for uh, quite some time now as well. It costs $55 and for the $55 you get the passenger variant of the intercontinental aircraft and also the freighter version of the intercontinental aircraft. It's a superb package. Uh, here you can see me going through the startup procedure. Um, whilst in some instances it has been simplified, you still have to go through you know, a uh, level D, so to speak, uh, startup routine. So it's about you know, uh, your FMC, making sure that all of the configuration of the FMC is correct for your flight plan. You then have to go through a, a logical startup procedure, so that's getting power onto the aircraft, whether it be battery or external power. Uh, you then have to start the APU uh, before starting the engines and uh, you know running through your FMC, making sure that you have no uh, callbacks there on the screen, and uh, if you have, uh, sorting those out as well. Um, I, it's a long time since I've flown a 747, so I had to go through the startup routine a couple of times just to make sure that I had it right. I hope I've got it right here. It may not be procedurally correct, and I always say this the videos that I do that show a startup routine. Here you see me starting engine number four, and uh, what you do you, on the overhead, you have to pull out the ignition switch and then watch the uh, ECAS there, the bottom display and uh, once you can see that the engine is running you inject the fuel fuel flow and you'll see the M1 rotation will uh, uh, start up spool up on the uh, upper ECAS. Now what I did was um, because of the way that I've got all the views set up on X camera rather than keep flipping backwards and forwards for each of the four engines what I did now was I started uh, ignition on the remaining three engines one two and three there and then went to uh, fuel control watching the uh, EGT on the lower ECAS as well you can just about see it there there we are so I can see that the three engines yeah they're rotating and now I can put in uh, ignition fuel flow and what will happen is that the engines will come up to full M1 rotation and N2 and uh, therefore we you know we're good to go as i say i didn't do it correctly and that's because i have um i've got my views set up with x camera but i hadn't got them in the right order the order that i wanted so that i could go from the overhead to the ecas uh, I, in fact i still need to adjust some of the cameras a little bit so that i've got them all working the way that i would like but as you can see the all four engines running nice and smooth and so it's time to turn off the APU, put some lights on, and uh, get myself out of here, uh, so to speak. The aircraft itself, in terms of handling, it handles really well. You can feel the weight of the aircraft, I think. You know, you feel the mass of the aircraft, certainly if you're flying it by hand and when you start to do coordinated turns as such. Um, one one bit of advice I will give you, it is a very long aircraft and when you come into land you must make sure that you get your flare right otherwise you will be uh, you will be striking that tail. And I suppose the same is the same for takeoff. Make sure that you've got your takeoff speed correct and uh, you listen to the call outs and when you give them V1 rotate then rotate to 10 degrees. But 
as I say, once again, you be very careful. It's, it's quite easy to perform a tail strike in this aircraft because uh, not only is the aircraft longer, but the tail section where the where the tail strike skid is is a little bit longer as well. So you know, giving you the opportunity to strike that tail even more so than in the past, I think. So um, I think that's about as much as I want to say about the aircraft. I think it is very, very well worth the money. Very much well worth the money. Um, you've got a very comprehensive manual. There's a great team behind this aircraft. It's it looks good. Uh, there are a couple of things maybe that could have been adjusted on the navigation display um, because I believe the nav display is the default X-plane uh, nav display. And so, whereas in maybe an Airbus, you get a, a very nice curve of a SID. Um, this one here, we're doing the Brecon 1 Alpha departure. And rather than having a curve, you've got straight lines to the waypoints. But the aircraft does fly a nice curve to the right of the Brecon 1 Alpha departure as uh, we leave uh, Cardiff Airport. So I, I can't really complain about that. I think it looks good. And uh, I'm going to keep quiet a, mo a moment here whilst I program the FMC. And we'll see you on the other side of that. Bravo, 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 good afternoon to you. Report your Uh 2,000 feet on 1014, Bravo, Bravo. Bravo, Bravo. 
Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here, x -Plane Dedicated. Today we're looking at the SSG 747-8i, I for Intercontinental. That means that this aircraft is big. It has been extended by, I think, of something like 16 feet. And, uh, of course, with that comes extra power, etc. What Boeing have done with this aircraft is they've given it some new engines, the General Electric engines, absolutely huge, producing a massive amount of thrust. In fact, the Boeing 747 7 has always been one of the most overpowered aircraft there is. Uh, I think, if I'm correct, that this aircraft can fly on just one engine, believe it or not, although you know, it's not expected for that to ever happen. As you can see here as we do our walk around, the modeling, the exterior modeling on the SSG is very, very good indeed, and uh, it's had an update, so we're now, it's not version 2, it's version point. 9.1 or something or 1.51 I can't remember exactly I'll put it up here uh, the exact model number but as you can see as we do the walk around the modeling is superb the uh, engine carolings there uh, with those kind of fluted ends which uh, improve efficiency of the engine really showing up uh, in high detail the exterior modeling is very good. There is one artifact on the exterior model that uh, they can't seem to get rid of. And uh, for those of you who remember, it looks like the marching ants on one of the engine uh, nacelles. But other than that, the exterior modeling is superb. Interior modeling, equally as good, maybe could be doing with refreshing and upgrading a little bit. But there have been a number of updates and enhancements to this aircraft uh, model, as you can see, as we look through the cockpit. And having been in a 747 Level D simulator at Cardiff Aviation, it's very good. I mean, it, it does look the business. Um, I think it would look an awful lot better on a larger monitor. I've got a 29-inch monitor. I think on a larger monitor, again, it would look even better. Now, on first appearance, when one first looks at this aircraft, you might think that it's rather simplistic, but it comes with a massive 225-page manual. It has been licensed by Boeing, so Boeing have given this aircraft its seal of approval. Not only that, Boeing actually used this model in one of those simulators. Here we are with the overhead, and um, unlike, uh, say, the 757 and the 767, where you go up and down to do your flow, with this, you go from left to right and you go from top to bottom. So rather than kind of going in a squiggly line, squiggly line up and down the overhead, you just go from top to bottom. And uh, as I say, in the previous incarnations of this, um, the startup routine was a, maybe a little bit simplistic, but now it's been changed. And so you've got to, once you get power on the aircraft, you can then go to the electronic flight bag, flight bag and turn on the uh, external power, the ground power. I will say that some of the click spots are not they're not as good as they should be um, and that's my one gripe at the moment that is the one thing that I think really needs improving is that the click spots uh, on many of the buttons uh, on on this aircraft including the EFB they need to be they need to be uh, enlarged maybe I think that's the word I'm looking for they need